So today we're going to be reviewing the fragrance which is also known to be called the Blue Beast and the Blue Beast is Amouage Interlude Man. So stay tuned. Hey what's going on guys? Hunter here and welcome back to my channel if you're a returning subscriber. Glad to have you here. And if you are new, what I do is I make fragrance related content. So if you love fragrances, please just hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future fragrance videos. And also make sure to follow my new Instagram fragrance page that I recently just started. All that is in the description below. But of course, as you can tell by the intro of this video, that is right, we're gonna be reviewing M. Waj's Interlude Man, which is also known as the Blue Beast, as you can tell in this beautiful blue bottle. One of the best looking bottles I've ever seen in my entire life, to be honest with you guys. Now, to firstly tell you guys how I got to know the Blue Beast or Interlude Man, is one of my subscribers actually sent me out a few like small decants of like uh, different fragrances from like Papua New Mali, M. Waj and stuff like that, where you can go check that video out. I'll also leave a, um, a link down below to check out my first impression of this, because he actually sent me this little small decant of Interlude right here. And when I first smelled this, guys, oh man, I fell in love with Interlude, man. It is right on my alley, but of course we'll get to that later in the video. But we always start off with this, uh, re these reviews with the packaging and presentation. So let's go ahead and look at that really quick. All right, so starting off with the box that Interlude Man comes in, comes in this absolutely beautiful uh, presentation, as you can see right here. It's like a work of art um, on this box. Of course, on the top, you says Interlude Man and Watch and the logo right there. On the front, same thing. You have like this nice crest and nothing on the back or the sides, just that art all the way around the whole box. And the box is very, very hard, like very hard as you can hear right there. Then on the bottom, just obviously your batch code to authenticate your product and see when your product was produced. I do have this in the 100 ml bottle. Now, as far as pricing goes, this actually runs you uh, 250 bucks for a 50 ml bottle and $340 for the 100 ml bottle I have in hand. So it is a very expensive fragrance, especially at retail. Um, definitely not cheap, but we'll get to obviously why it's worth that in my opinion later in the video. Um, and yeah, if you guys can't tell right there, my box says made in Oman, which is actually very, very good and kind of rare. You actually have two different variations of M uh, M Watch fragrances. Some are made in the UK and others are made in Oman, which the Oman versions are sought after. People praise those versions saying they last a lot longer, uh, better ingredients and things like that because the house of M Watch is actually based in Oman. And this is also another reason why I fell in love with the house. It might be one of my favorite houses of all time. And I can't wait to add more uh, to my collection from them because based in Oman, which is in the Middle East, and they actually uh, get all their ingredients from Oman, such as uh, frankincense, myrrh, a, a, a poppinax, things like that. And it's also known back in the uh, biblical times where they used to get the same ingredients from there, because obviously they used to use myrrh, frankincense, and stuff like that. Like the three wise men brought uh, Jesus, myrrh, and frankincense. And that's supposedly where they got it from was Oman. So every time I smell this fragrance, I just think of that, guys. It's an absolute masterpiece of a fragrance. But like I said, we'll get to that later. Now, as far as the box, it does pop open like so. And it comes in this nice velvet uh, material right there in this beautiful, like royal blue color. And the whole inside is lined with the velvet also. But you do want to be careful when you take this out because the bottle, let me see. The bottle actually sits in like so, not very deep. So when you take, when you first get your M Wash fragrance, you want to be very, very careful opening this up because that bottle could obviously come out and crash on the floor and possibly break, which would not be a good thing since this fragrance is very, very expensive at 340 bucks. But yeah, that's the box. Let's take a look at this beautiful bottle here. Of course, the all the uh, men M Wash's look like this. They all come in the same exact bottle. Um, you, of course, have their logo right there, Mwaj Interlude. Now, the newer ones, there's a couple of different changes. Um, the older bottles used to say Interlude on the sides. As you can see, mine does not. It actually says it right underneath Mwaj right there. 
And then also the newer bottles have a magnetic cap, which I absolutely love. You guys know that if you follow my channel, it does obviously click right there and holds very, very good. Now on the bottom, of course, it's the same information, Eau de Parfum, which this is an EDP concentration, which is good, 100 mil. And then you have your batch code and made in Oman. Very, very dark. You probably cannot pick that up on camera. It is in like black ink. So you can't really see it. I can see it in person, but on camera, it's not gonna focus in. Then on the top, you do have that crown uh, logo right there. And nothing inside there, just gold to authenticate your product. You wanna look, obviously see all this stuff as well. And then yeah, to take the cap off, it does, you can turn it. Uh, this is another way to authenticate your MWAS products. Um, if it doesn't turn and come off, then it's probably a fake, to be honest with you. So yeah, it must do that. Now, looking at the uh, the cap itself, where this is actually from, like the, you see the um, like the outline of it, that's actually from the swords they used back in, I believe, Oman. The end of the swords had this shape to them. So that's where they got it from, which I think is absolutely incredible in my opinion. Oh, I cannot wait to get to this. But as far as packaging and presentation, guys, I'm gonna give Anchelou Man a solid 10 out of 10. I absolutely love this bottle. The box is phenomenal as well. So yeah, it's getting a perfect rating of 10 out of 10 for me. All right, so before we go over the notes and how this one smells to me, I do wanna mention the uh, the perfumer behind Anchelou Man is Pierre Negrin or Negrin. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but he is the one who perfumed this beautiful fragrance. And this fragrance was also released in 2012, so it has been around for quite a few years now. They also just recently released two flankers of Interlude Man, which is surprising for the House of MYs. They've never done that before, and they only done two flankers of Interlude because this is one of their most popular, if not the most popular, from the house. Um, and the two fragrances they did, uh, flanker wise, is Black Iris, which I haven't smelled, I believe that came out last year. And this year, they just came out with the Interlude 53 which is pretty much an extract to pop foam with 53% uh, oil concentration. And I can only imagine how strong that fragrance is considering how strong the original Blue Beast is. And we'll get to that later in the video, but let's go over the, uh, the notes really quick. So in the top notes of Interlude Man, you're gonna get oregano, pepper, and bergamot. In the middle notes, you're gonna get incense, opoponax, amber, and labdanum. And in the base of Interlude Man, you're gonna get leather, oud, sandalwood, and patchouli. All right, so let's go ahead and spray Interlude Man. I'm gonna be using a test strip today, so let's go ahead and take a look at the atomizer here. Very good atomizer. Of course, you would expect that with such an expensive fragrance. It definitely does the job. So Interlude Man is a very, and I mean very complex fragrance and it's always changing throughout the lifetime when you're wearing it. Oh man, wow. Yeah, this is something else, guys. Very, very rich fragrance. So it actually opens up with a very unique note of oregano. Now oregano is actually like a green herb note, which makes it very, very unique. And it's actually standing out a lot more than it usually does on skin on this paper test strip here. Wow. A lot of people um, get thrown off by the oregano note. It doesn't last the life of the fragrance, only like the first maybe 30 or so minutes. It's also very, very um, spicy in the opening from the pepper. I'm not getting much bergamot from this fragrance. It's more like, um, a very, very dark, smoky, very, very smoky fragrance, guys. Obviously that is from the incense, which is, I would say the incense is the dominant note in Interlude Man by far. The incense lasts pretty much the entire life of the fragrances, I mean, of the fragrance. When you spray this one, you're gonna get the incense from the moment you spray it until the moment you either shower or the end of the day. It lasts the lifetime of it. But you also have the Apopanax on, um, in this fragrance, which Apopanax is actually um, called, or it is sweet myrrh. So it is a resin, just like frankincense. And it gives it like um, a sweet vibe to it. So it's very, um, 
smoky, a little bit sweet from the sweet myrrh. Wow. Yeah, this stuff is amazing, guys. Very resinous. And also, M Wash is known for their uh, incense fragrances. They usually use um, incense in the majority of their fragrances. And this is, I would say, the most dominant incense fragrance that they have in the arsenal. By far. Of course, they have Epic Man, Lyric Man, Dia Man. They have a ton of fragrances, and most of them contain the note of frankincense or incense, which is pretty much the same thing. Just incense gives it more of a, a smoky vibe to it than frankincense. And then of course in the base guys. So this fragrance, like I said, it does change a lot. In the opening, you're gonna get the oregano note, which is definitely prominent, especially on this test strip now smelling it. I usually obviously wear it on skin. I haven't tested it that much on test strips. This is kind of like the first time smelling it off the test strip. Besides, I believe the first impression, but that was a while ago. The oregano note is standing out a lot alongside the pepper. But after that, that's when the sweet myrrh comes through. Obviously the smokiness from the incense. And then you also have that golden amber in this fragrance, guys, which gives it a very warm feeling. This is a very warm fragrance. And then also in the dry down. So this is when it changes a lot for me. Now in the dry down, of course it has the agarwood, which is oud, which is also based in like obviously Oman, they have a lot of oud over there, frankincense, myrrh, stuff like that. The oud, it does come out once you get past like the top notes and it starts to settle down on your skin. You'll get a lot of the oud in there. It's kind of like a, like a, a medicinal kind of oud, I would say. But here's the, the thing that changes the most. So in the dry down, it becomes very creamy, guys. Now, I almost think it's vanilla, even though vanilla is not listed in this fragrance, it comes across vanilla to me. I'm almost certain it's vanilla I'm picking up in the base, but it does have that sandalwood, which sandalwood also comes across very um, like smooth, very creamy. But for some reason, it just seems like vanilla to me. So I'm almost certain that is what it is. And also in the base, it does have that patchouli, which works perfect alongside the uh, creaminess from the, either the sandalwood or vanilla, which I think I'm picking up on. It gives it that nice earthy backbone of the fragrance in the dry down. Absolute stunning, beautiful creation by Pierre and Green. And also I believe this was Pierre's first um, fragrance with Emois. So he had to go out with a bang pretty much and impress the house of Emois with this fragrance. And I said he did so without a doubt, guys. This has become one of my favorite fragrances out of my entire collection. And obviously, as you can tell behind me, I own a lot of bottles, guys. And this one is for sure in my top three. I, I can honestly say this fragrance is in my top three favorite fragrances of all time. Absolutely love it. Obviously I bought a bottle after testing out the uh, small decant that a subscriber sent out. I just knew I had to have this one in my collection, guys. Just a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. And this smells very, very natural. This does not come across synthetic whatsoever. Now, obviously I'm going off the uh, base and or the Oman variation of this fragrance, which they say they get all their ingredients from Oman where they're located. So I'm assuming this obviously has real uh, sweet myrrh, real oud in here, frankincense. <sighs> this is something else. But I'm telling you guys, when you're wearing this one, you have to be confident when you wear this, man because this fragrance will wear you pretty much. It's such a beast. But we'll talk about the performance after this. Yeah, so for Interlude Man, guys, I'm gonna give this one a solid 10 out of 10 perfect score for the scent profile of this. Yeah, I, I have to give it a 10 out of 10. I'm in love with this fragrance so much, guys. 
and it's just so addicting too. I mean, I've been wearing this stuff a lot since I've got it. I mean, a lot. Hasn't gotten me any compliments yet. I can't say that. Um, I mean, this one is very, just in your face, very loud. It's not really a crowd pleasing fragrance, so to say, since it's obviously very smoky, very earthy, somewhat sweet from the uh, myrrh or the opoponax, op op the sweet myrrh. Yeah, not a crowd pleaser. You have to love fragrances to like this one or appreciate fragrance at least like I do and a lot of you guys do. Yeah, so MY's Interlude Man is getting a solid 10 out of 10 for the scent profile. Let's go over and talk about performance now. Now, before we get over to performance, I did forget to mention the best season seasons to wear this one. Now, since it's very dark, leathery, oody, smoky, earthy, you definitely want to only wear this one on like quarter days. Obviously in the fall, this will work perfect in the fall, guys. Absolutely perfect. And also in the winter, since it's very dark and just a beast of a fragrance, guys. So if you live in um, like an all season location, like I do here in Ohio, definitely stick to the colder months uh, and the season such as fall and winter. You don't really wanna pull this one out in the spring or summer. It will be very, very cloying. So yeah, just stick to those two seasons and you'll be good to go. Or maybe like um, in the spring, like on a cold, obviously like night, you could definitely rock this one for if you're going out like on a date or something like that, Interlude Man will be your companion, guys. I'm telling you right now, definitely wear this one in the quarter months, not the warmer months. All right, so performance with Interlude Man. Guys, it does not get the name Blue Beast for no reason. This is truly a beast of a fragrance, guys. It pretty much lasts on my skin. Like I, like I said, I work a, um, a 10 hour shift. So obviously I need my fragrances to perform throughout the whole 10 hour shift itself. Most fragrances obviously do not perform that long. Now interlude, man, this stuff is something else as far as the performance goes, guys. This lasts me easily a 10 hour shift and I can still pick it up in the air without any problem. Even most of the time when I spray this one on, and um, like if I spray it on before I go to bed or whatever, or just like after I shower during the day and I spray this one on for the evening, and then I'll go to sleep, I wake up in the morning and I can still pick up interlude, man, like vividly, guys. I'm not just saying like a very faint dry down of the fragrance. I'm talking, I can still distinguish this is interlude, man, almost like the opening of it, guys. So when it first opens, it almost smells the same exact from when you first spray it to hours, and I'm talking hours later, like 12 plus hours later, you can still pick this beast up off your skin. Very potent fragrance, guys. Even though for some reason I have heard a lot of people say it's not as strong as a lot of people talk about. Now, I don't know if that's because they have the, the uh, made in UK for, uh, version, which a lot of people say doesn't perform as good as the Oman version. So, like I said, I'm going off the Oman version, which is obviously where they're located um, and where they started first making fragrances. And then they uh, recently just branched off to the UK to make fragrances as well, like two separate places where they're outputting these fragrances. But I got the original location made in Oman. So I would say if you're looking to try to get into Lude Man or any other, other, um, other M watches, try to get the made in the Oman versions, guys. Um, I don't know how difficult that would be. Maybe if you go to like uh, any retail stores that sells Emwaj, I uh, think like Saks Fifth Avenue, um, Bloomingdale's, maybe Neiman Marcus. Maybe look at the uh, box and see if it says made in Oman at the bottom, which it would be hmm, right there, as you can see, made in Oman. I don't know. I mean, obviously, I don't know the, if the UK is actually bad. Um, I mean, you can possibly try to get the made in UK and try to test it out and see. It might even be the same exact um, thing. I'm not 100% sure. I never tried a UK unless the small decan subscriber sent out was made in the UK because yesterday I did actually do like a side by side comparison of the two. 
And this one came across a lot more even smoky, like smokier than that decan. So I'm not 100% sure, obviously that could be made in the Oman or the UK. There's no way of telling since it is just a decan, but they were slightly different. The performance of the two were sort of the same from what I tested, but I don't know if it's UK or Oman. But yeah, the performance guys last the entire day, projects very, very well, even during the cold uh, months, this thing just bursts through the cold. I mean, it just pushes through the cold off your skin, especially if you're like hot, like um, if you're working and you do like physical activity and you sweat a lot and just get hot, guys, this stuff will fill a warehouse pretty much. I'm not even kidding, it's a beast. Very, very strong. One of the strongest fragrances I've ever tested in my life. And for that reason, guys, Interlude Man is getting a solid, yet again, perfect score of 10 out of 10 for performance, guys. So that would make Interlude Man, the uh, packaging and presentation, a 10 out of 10. The scent profile and smell is a 10 out of 10. The performance is a 10 out of 10. So we have our first masterpiece, in my opinion, 10 out of 10 fragrance that I have reviewed thus far while doing this kind of format is M-Watch Interlude Man. I absolutely love this fragrance, guys. I think it's a masterpiece. If you try this one, you guys might as well, but definitely stay away from this if you don't like the dark oud, smoky fragrances, this one won't be for you. And especially if you like crowd pleasing fragrances, this one probably won't be for you either. But if you love fragrances, look at them like pieces of art, you love natural fragrances, you love dark, woody, oody, smoky fragrances, check out Interlude Man, guys. Absolute must have, in my opinion. So that's gonna wrap up the review for M Watch Interlude Man. Solid 10 out of 10, like I said. If you like this uh, video, please give it a like down below. I'd appreciate that. And subscribe if you guys haven't already for more reviews, unboxings, weekly fragrance rotations, list videos, and all that stuff to come, guys. And yeah, just take care, everybody.